Hey Polish fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wild Wind Lacquer. In today's video, as you can see, we have a lot of polish to look at. I've actually been running very, very behind in my regular unboxings like my polished pickup hauls, Hella Handmade Creations, and the other boxes that I get such as Polished Gamers Box because I've been so busy doing the major haul of those 2000 bottles of nail polish. So a lot of these are previous boxes from earlier in the year. This first lineup is actually Hella Handmade made creations from March, which was a pretty big order. And then we get into my smaller order for Hella Handmade Creations for April. And then I know you can see bottle lids right here. That is for the next video that I'm going to be recording, which is an order from Wildflower Lacquer. And then even below that is a pretty big order from Polish Pickup for February. All right, enough chit chat. Let's go ahead and jump in. The first polish is from Bees Knees Lacquer. And this one is To Hell With Good Intentions. Like I mentioned, this one is from the Hella Handmade Creations for March 2023. And this was one of the polishes that for sure was a must have for that month. This is a really beautiful deep purple jelly. And as you can see, it is absolutely jam packed full of this larger particle shimmer. You're mainly seeing that as a red to gold, but as you can see there at the edge, it does shift to green. Very, very pretty. And here it is in three coats. I will say this one does maintain a pretty sheer jelly consistency. As you can see, it does still have that squishy formula, but the base of this is a beautiful purple. And then of course, all of that amazing shimmer. It has one of my favorite shifts. You put this pigment in anything and I am all about it. So that first one was Bees Knees Lacquer to hell with good intentions. The second item in alphabetical order is actually a wax. When you order the Hula Moon Wax, they always send you a sample for the following month's wax scent and that one was made you look which would have come out in this month and as you can see I did not get it so this one is described as this could be named made you sniff it is Sicilian lemon delicious apple and delicate bellflower intertwine sweet mm, pick cake I'm actually not sure about that p-i-k-a-k-e and provocative white rose on a bed of cedarwood warm musk and golden amber inspired by the design of fragrance named light blue all right let's see how this smells because it sounds interesting Ooh! oh my goodness i should have got some of this man i really wish i had smelled this opened up my package and smelled this before April's release because this smells amazing. It definitely has the underlying warmer, somewhat masculine scents of the cedarwood and the amber, but it's really nicely balanced with the floral bellflower and a pretty subtle white rose. Now, for myself personally, my taste towards scents is that I am not a huge floral fan. So most of the time when I see flower scents in things, I've often been kind of scared off by them unless they're in something like this, which is complementary and complex. So you have something sweet, you have a foodie scent in there, you'll have the cedarwood and amber. So you've got that musky, mysterious background notes and then you have the flowers with the subtle feminine back notes or forward notes in some cases but I find that those intermixed like this in a complex mixture is really really interesting to my nose so I really think I might like this warm. I think what I'll do is keep an eye for if this ever restocks as their overpours because Hella Handmade does do that I forget how they work it, but I want to say like every month there are restocks of some of their overpours. So I might have to keep a lookout for that, but that smells really, really nice. All right, onto the wax that I did buy, which was for March, and that is bad for me. This one is described as having top notes of raspberry blended with middle notes of jasmine, wild rose, and violet piled on base notes of musk and sandalwood. This fragrance is complex, tart, but soothing like a big calming hug. So again, the reason why I didn't mind getting this with those floral notes is because of the other notes that were mixed in here. Again, we have these deeper notes of the musk and sandalwood, top notes of something sweet like raspberry. So I'm hoping I'll like this one. It's not 100% because it does have so many different kinds of flowers, but let's go ahead and see how this smells. Hmm, I think I might like this one. So first off, I'm smelling the tartness of the raspberry, which almost has like a lemony note to it. And I am smelling 
the floral, but it's not strong, at least on a cold sniff. And the other notes, the sandalwood and musk, I don't really smell at all other than them maybe providing a background of depth to the scent, which again, I'm very curious to see how this is going to smell warm, but I get the feeling I'm really going to like this one as well. So that one was Hula Moon Wax Melt, bad for me. All right, on to the freebie that I got from Hula Moon because I did place such a large order for that month. This time the freebie was the Hula Moon Kona Gold Cuticle Oil, which I don't think I've tried before. And I'm not sure if this one has a scent. It says Sweet Hawaiian Honey Scent. Ooh, okay, let's see how that smells. So it comes in a nail polish bottle with a regular paddle brush. Okay, this one is definitely floral forward. Yeah, that one is pretty floral forward. I'm not really smelling too much of the sweet notes of the honey. So I'm not going to try this because chances are this is going to go in a freebie box or a mystery box or something like that because, yeah, this scent might give me a headache. It's pretty floral forward. So that was the freebie though. That was the Hula Moon Cuticle Oil. All right, on to more polish. The next polishes that I got was actually a duo from MN Indie Polish. So a lot of the months they release a duo. Usually it's an undie polish and a topper. So let's go ahead and look at the topper first. The topper is this one called the Goblin King. And they also came with a little custom sticker of the Goblin King there from the Labyrinth. And the Goblin King Topper is a beautiful mix of iridescent flakies and multi-chrome flakies. And I can't quite tell if there is an, a subtle holographic glitter in this, but mainly what I'm seeing are those flakies. As you can see, you've got those deeper jewel tones from the multi-chrome flakies and then the brighter iridescent colors from the iridescent flakies. So this should be pretty unique to my collection as far as a topper goes. And here it is in three coats. As you can see, this is not going to get opaque on its own. It is definitely meant as a topper, but look at all those beautiful colors. You've got the deeper tones of purples, golds, I think there's some fuchsia on those multi-chrome flakies as well. Then you have the golds, pinks, and yellows, and some oranges as well in the iridescent flakies. There's something flashing a light purple right along there as well, which I can't quite tell which particle that's coming from, but really, really pretty. So the topper was the Goblin King, and then the main polish was this one called Crystal Ball. And this one is a really light, soft pink with a load of shimmer that shifts from blue to green, and it's in a nice larger size. There's also a holographic glitter in here, and I think maybe even an iridescent glitter. So this is another really beautiful combination. I love the contrast of that glowing shimmer in this light, delicate base. And here it is in three coats. I will say this one and a lot of the polishes that I get that are in these duos, I can't get opaque on their own. This is three coats and as you can see, it is quite sheer. I don't know if that would look different on the nail. I mean, I with it being that sheer, I have a hard time thinking that it would be any different on my natural nail, but that's how it swatched for me. Um, it is a really pretty color. I just think for myself, I would definitely have to wear this over a cream, a color that might work nicely maybe a bit light, but this is one that I do have on my spring rack, which I still have up. I still need to get that going for summer, but this one is Night Owl Lacquer's Love Yourself. Obviously, it is a lot lighter, but it could give you an opaque base for this shimmer to bounce off of. Or, I think the better tone for this one is actually Vapid's Ishtar. This is a really nice match to that base. So you have this lighter pink, not so much white though than Love Yourself from Night Owl Lacquer, and then you could layer this over it, which is probably what I'll do in the future. So here it is in the three coats, and then right next to it, you can see it in three coats with one coat of the Goblin King over it. And as you can see, it adds that nice layer of the iridescent flakies and multicorn flakies on top of that gorgeous shimmer. So again, not much of the pink base really shows through though. So again, I will be wearing this over a cream to give myself that boost in color. As a side bonus, when a polish is this sheer, you can wear it over a lot of other colors and get that shimmer put on basically any color that you want. But that was MN Indie Polish Crystal Ball. The next polish that I got is from Moonshine Manny, and this one is called, I actually don't know if that's a hard G or a soft G, so it's either Nagini or Nagini. I'm really not sure, but it is a magnetic polish, and this one is a really unique polish. It's got this very 
dark blurply base and look how full of flakies and shimmer it is. You've got those blue to aqua flakies. You've got that shimmer, which I believe is going to pull up into the magnetic line. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, so that those warmer particles that you're seeing pull up into that magnetic line. Those reds and oranges, bit of rust in there. And there's more shimmer as well. As you can see there, you've got a green shimmer. So this is just really unique to my collection, a beautiful polish. And here is that one in three coats. This one did need three coats for me to reach full opacity with the base. I did get what I would call mostly opaque in the second coat, but once it was magnetized, I started to notice a little bit of bald spots in the areas of the darker polish. So if you wanted to avoid that, you could either wear it in the three coats like I've swatched here, or you could wear this over a very dark blue as a base to sort of give yourself that boost in opacity and save your limited edition polish. But look at that red glow, that red eye, just very striking against this base. And you get a very strong green glow in that shimmer as well. So you almost get a double eye because you have the magnetic cat's eye and then you have the shimmer going along the length of the polish. So really neat there. This again is such a unique polish. So that one was Moonshine Manny's either Nagini or Nagini. I'm really not sure. Next up, we have one from Painted Polish, and this one is Blush Blush Baby, and I believe they're doing an entire series of blush color polishes. This particular one is a hollow with iridescent flakies. Look at that. So I thought this one was really striking because you have the soft blush base and then you have these deeper tones of fuchsia and even purple as well as orange and gold popping up in those beautiful flakies. This one was opaque for me in two coats. And look at that lovely color. This is one of those shades of pink that I've liked for a long time. It actually took me quite a long time to warm up to shades like this brighter pink that we're going to look at next. And what I like about this is even though I do have a lot of colors in this color family, with the mix of the hollow and the flakies, this one still should be pretty unique in my collection. Again, I love the tone and I love the addition of those flakies. So that one was Painted Polish Blush Blush Baby. Next up is one from Penelope Luce, and this one is 11. This one, you guys, whew, this is a beautiful, bright summer pink, and that glow, I hope you can see that nicely on camera, is such a beautiful shift. You've got this purple to blue that just pops off of this pink base. Really gorgeous, and I like that there's almost two different sizes of the particles in there. If you look closely at that shimmer, you can see these little teeny darker blue speckles which is just so beautiful. So here is 11 in three coats. This one is still slightly squishy in those three coats. So if you have a pretty prominent visible nail line, you might need a fourth, or you could always wear this over a blurring base coat or an undie, like I mentioned with the other polish. You could wear this one over a fuchsia or another shade of dark pink. You could even try this over other colors. Again, you could put this over purples, blues. The possibilities are endless. So this is another gorgeous one. I again love the combination of the pink base with a blue shimmer. This is one of those color categories that if you've been following me for a while, you'll know I sort of have a weakness for, and I definitely need to do comparisons at some point, but this one was just too gorgeous to pass up. So that one was Penelope Luce 11. Next up, I got an item from Ribbit's Stickets, and this is their acetone additive. And for March, they were continuing on with their Princess Bride collection, and this is Have Fun Storming the Castle, which is one of my favorite quotes from that movie. And let's see if they have these scent notes on this one. I don't see them, but let's go ahead and see how this one smells. Ooh, I think I'm smelling cinnamon. It's a warm, familiar scent, and I don't know why, but I'm having a hard time placing it, but I think it's cinnamon. I think I smell maybe like coconut milk or rice milk or something along those lines. That smells delicious. That smells really, really good. But that is a really nice scent from Ribbit's Stickets. And again, that was their acetone additive in Have Fun Storming the Castle. And then the last polish for Hella Handmade Creations March is from Sassy Sauce, and this one is Belle of the Ball. This is a really beautiful multi-chrome that is jam-packed full of hollow. This one shifts from fuchsia to purple to blue. You have the vibrancy of that multi-chrome. There's even a bit of gold and orange popping up at the extreme angles. I think you can sort of see it popping up there in the corner. 
And then you have that intense hollow. Look at that. And there is that one in two coats. This one was nice and opaque in those two coats. I don't think too many nail lengths would need a third for full opacity. And I mean, look at that rainbow flare that you're getting. Just gorgeous. You can also see a sort of a dual shimmer going on from the multi-chrome. You've got this bluer shift here. And then towards the back, you've got that more purple shift. So that one was Sassy Sauce Bell of the Ball. All right, now on to the Hella Handmade Creations that I placed for the month of April, which was obviously a much smaller order. So the first one is from Alchemy Lacquers, and this one is called Center of the Galaxy. And it's a purple, you guys. Look at the glow on this. It is this absolutely stunning purple polish. Oddly enough, it's looking a lot darker on my screen than it is in person. In person, it is this deep but vibrant grapey tone. Then it is loaded with these holographic flakies and you see that glow? That is absolutely gorgeous in this polish. I'm seeing some orange at the edges as well as that bright fuchsia that I'm seeing on camera. Love this combination. Here it is in two coats. You can see all of those beautiful flakies really nicely. And then as I tip the nail towards my light source over there in the corner, you can see the warmer tones from that shimmer popping. Love the tone of purple. And again, it's not quite as dark as I feel like it's coming across on camera. It's a nice vibrant but moody shade of purple. So that one was Alchemy Lacquer's Center of the Galaxy. And then I got another Ribbits Stickets Acetone Additive, this time in the Cliffs of Insanity, again from the Princess Bride collection. Oh, interesting. So this one almost has a soapy, clean scent. Huh. It has been a while since I ordered this, and I don't remember what the scent notes were offhand. But yeah, interesting scent. It is a cleaner sort of a scent, which I'm having a hard time pinpointing what I would describe that as or what it would be. I would probably say of the two that I got in the last couple of months, I would say probably um, Have Fun Storming the Castle is my more favorite smell, but I'm curious how I would like this in an acetone additive. Obviously, since it's going to go on and be essentially cleaned off of your nails, you don't really have to have it be your favorite scent. It's not going to be something that sticks around with you for a while, but it is nice when you're using acetone for it not to smell like acetone. <laughs> so that one was Ribbit's Stickets Acetone Additive in Cliffs of Insanity. And then the third polish that I got and the last of this video for Hella Handmade Creations for April was Victorian Varnish Spare Gears. And whew, this one is beautiful. So when I was unboxing my hauls and I was lining everything up, I did notice that this one and Sassy Sauce have a very similar formula. As far as a description of a polish, you've got a blackened base loaded with hollow, and then you've got this multi-chromatic shimmer. They do swatch differently though. Thankfully, I didn't instantly dupe myself in back-to-back -back months of HHC. As you can see, the shifts are slightly different and the bases actually look very different on the nail. But again, as far as a description goes, this one does have a similar description. You have this deep base loaded with the holographic particles as well as the multi-chromatic shimmer. And I mean, look at all the rainbows that you're seeing in this one. You've got orange, gold, pink, purple. Look at that green that's popping up there, that vibrant green, all the rainbows, so, so pretty. So here it is in two coats. And there on the nail, I think you can see the difference in the amount of shimmer or the type of shimmer that you're going to see. You've got more of a pink glow in the one from Victorian Varnish, and you have more of a purple glow and blue glow in the one from Sassy Sauce. So this one was nice and opaque for me in two coats as well. Again, the glow and the colors on this are absolutely gorgeous. So that one was a Victorian Varnish Spare Gears. And as always, their polish did come with a little custom sticker for that month, the name of the polish, and a little logo type thing that you could put on a little apothecary jar, which I think is such a neat little bonus to add. And there we have it. That was two months worth of Hella Handmade Creations orders. Let me know down below which ones were your favorites. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're new, make sure to hit the little subscribe button down below. That way you don't miss out on any of my new videos. And I will see you in that next one.